Have you ever played Mirror's Edge? What about Jet Set Radio? Dying Light? Titanfall? Okay, now we're getting off track. If you couldn't tell, I'm talking about parkour games, but only in the loosest sense of the word. Games where movement and traversal are core mechanics, instead of boring downtime like in most other titles. Where you could be focusing on the story, but just running, jumping, and climbing through the world is a game within itself. While there may be some old school puzzles mixed in, getting from point A to point B is usually enough of a puzzle alone. Whatever you want to call them, this loose genre of games rarely gets new entries, so I'm always intrigued when I see something similar pop up. In this case, we have a new title by an indie dev known as Rubeki. Their game, Lorne's Lure, recently got a free prologue available to try on Steam. The final game isn't complete, but the prologue gives an interesting look on where it's headed in the future. Like all those games I mentioned before, Lorne's Lure is heavily focused on traversal, but unlike those other games, rock climbing also plays a huge role in the game. You're still working out optimal routes to platform across while trying not to fall to your death, but you also have two handy picks at your disposal, allowing you to climb up most walls. The game accounts for this with a stamina system, similar to the climbing in Breath of the Wild. You can't climb on every type of surface, but in the demo I'd say a good 90% of the walls were climbable. I think this is a pretty neat mechanic that allows for much more inventive level design. Instead of having to put ladders or tiered objects everywhere, the player is able to take vertical movement into their own hands. My only complaint with the climbing is that the rest of the movement mechanics just feel too good in comparison. Running through the world while hopping across tiny platforms or sliding down slopes at high speeds feels great. It takes a bit to get a handle on the controls, just like any other parkour game, but it really starts to flow nicely once you start to piece it all together. That is, until you're faced with a gap or a platform far beyond your reach, meaning your only option is to stop and climb across. While the climbing isn't necessarily slow, it really breaks up the flow of speeding through the world you get from the rest of the game. I played the level a few times and felt like I spent almost half my time climbing things. When I was sprinting across platforms, hopping off objects, and making extreme maneuvers to avoid falling to my death, I felt like the game was at its peak. I got a little hint of Mirror's Edge all over again, getting back into that perfect flow state. But the feeling never lasted long. Instead I was constantly taken out of it by having to stop and climb for a while. I'm not quite sure what I would personally do in a situation like this. I mean the climbing obviously is a core part of the game, and it works well enough on its own. But despite being such an important mechanic, it contrasts sharply with the rest of the fluid movement. Could you increase the climbing speed and reduce the stamina bar to compensate? Possibly, but I don't know if that would actually work out for the better. Perhaps the first level just showcased a lot of climbing, and it's not actually 50% of the game like I experienced. I think wall runs or wall jumps would greatly assist the flow in sections where you'd otherwise have to stop and climb small distances, but as a game dev myself, I know just how complex fluid movement code can be to program. Which is why I'm already impressed with what works so far. Ledge grabs, wall runs, vaults, tic tacs, and the like would be neat additions to the game, but they're nightmares to program dynamically. It says something that Mirror's Edge was made by a massive team and still has parkour bugs in the code. But enough about my issues with the climbing. I think the game does have a ton of potential, and it's not like that one element feels bad or anything. There's still an undetermined amount of time to add or polish just about anything before the game is actually done. Instead of focusing on what could be, I want to point out some stuff I like so far. First off, the checkpoints are pretty well done. You never lose much time by missing a jump or dying, and you can always revert to your checkpoint instantly at the press of a button. The UI is crisp and animates pretty nicely. I like that it moves and jostles around with you, feeling a lot more like a heads up display instead of just some elements pasted on the screen. The audio, while minimal, is suitingly foreboding and even a little ominous at times. I think there's a lot of potential here for more ambient noise as the game goes on. Things like electrical humming, metallic groaning, and the like to add even more flavor to everything. And last but not least, the world itself is very mysterious and intriguing. Endless labyrinthine tunnels and massive underground structures of hard stone and metal? Right up my alley. It even reminds me of a level I made for Heliophobia a few years back, where you have to parkour through massive structures underneath the city while trying not to fall into the abyss. Clearly we have some similar tastes, so I'm definitely excited to see more. I think if you're into parkour games, traversal puzzles, and speedrunning, this is definitely going to be one to keep an eye on. I'm glad that someone's making more games like this, because they're way too few and far between right now. Lorne's Lure is a very promising title with a couple rough edges here and there. Nothing out of the ordinary for an early demo version. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to try it out yourself. I mean, it is free after all. 
If you do play it, let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Or if there's any other games you think I should check out, I'd be happy to hear them. As always, feel free to subscribe if you want to help support the channel. Either way, I hope to see you all in the next one.